Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be demonstrating this advanced diamond shaped macrame plant hanger. Stay tuned. Don't forget to take a screenshot of today's project details. Now let's get started. Grab all six cords and place it through the center of your ring. With one of the smaller cords, we're going to make a loop and then we're going to tie a gathering knot right at the top, right below our ring here. Although the knots used in this pattern are basic, I do consider this an advanced project simply due to the amount of time and detail. So if you're new to macrame and you've practiced your knots, you can totally handle this project. And don't forget, if I'm going too fast for you, you can always tap the three dots on the top right corner of this video to adjust the speed. Okay, so once your gathering knot is secure, trim the ends. Next, we're going to tie a simple square knot sinnet. To do this, we're going to tie 12 square knots in a row. So, in case you're wondering what the heck a sinnet is, it is three or more cords that are either braided or tied together to form a single cordage. <laughs> so, it's kind of like a rope made out of a rope. I know it sounds really silly, but it is a very useful thing to know. Especially if you're into hiking, you can hide quite a long length of rope inside of a small keychain. Although I would not suggest using macrame cord, I would highly recommend paracord if you're going to use it for survival purposes. Anyways, that's not what we're doing here. Right now we're making a really pretty plant hanger. So let's carry on and make 12 square knots. Once you've counted 12, it's time to add our wooden bead. Believe it or not, I found these wooden beads at my local dollar store and they are amazing. I can fit all four cords inside of the single bead. I'll see if I can find the link for you, but specifically I found these at Dollarama. Okay, after you put your wooden bead on, we're gonna tie 12 more square knots, but this is important. Make sure you switch your working cords. Okay, so now we got the first one completed. We're gonna do it two more times. Ta-da! <laughs> okay, now it's time to start on the basket. So you will want to divide your square knot sinnet into two. And what I have done is tied it on either sides of my rolling rack. Next, grab one of your smaller 60 inch cords and we're gonna find the center. Once you have your center loop, we're gonna tie a reverse lark's head knot. And now we're going to repeat this three more times on this one side. You should have a total of four reverse lark's head knots on each side. So yep, you guessed it, we're going to do the same thing to the other half. Okay, so find your two center cords and cross them over. We will be using the cord that was on your right as the filler cord and we're going to tie our double half hitches around this cord all the way down. The reason why I cross the center cords around each other is because it helps eliminate that gap between the sinnet and now our double half hitches. Okay, so let's carry on tying our double half hitches all the way straight across. Once you make it to the end, we're going to be doing the same thing to the other side. So find your center cord that was on your left side, and we're going to be using that as our filler cord for our double half hitches. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on and go straight across. And now we're going to find the center cords again. Take the two center cords and cross them over. And we're going to do another row of double half hitches, just like we did previously. Okay. 
When you're doing this row, stop right at the end of your last double half hitch. Do not use the filler cord in the previous row. In fact, it might just be easier to move them up and out of the way like I did. All right, so we're gonna do the exact same thing to this side, only we're gonna be very careful not to add that filler cord just like we did before. Okay, so I'm going to remove the filler cords up and out of the way and right now we're going to focus just on the center cords here. So we're going to grab the four middle cords here and we're going to tie a square knot. Okay, so we're going to alternate our square knots here. So grab two cords that are on the left side and combine them with two cords on the right side from the previous square knot above. So we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to grab two cords on the right hand side and two cords on the left hand side from the previous square knot from above. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for this third row here. We're going to grab two cords on the left and combine them with the two cords from the previous square knot above. And now for the very center, we're going to add a wooden bead. If you can't fit all four cords inside of your wooden bead like I can, don't worry, just use the two center cords. And of course, we're going to tie one more square knot to complete this row. Okay, so for this next row, you want to skip the first two cords, grab the two cords that are on your right in the previous square knot, and two cords from inside of your wooden bead. And we're going to tie a square knot here. So the wooden bead in the previous row acts like a square knot. Okay, so to complete this row, we're going to take the two cords from inside of the wooden bead and then the two cords from the right previous square knot. And we're going to be tying our final square knot in this row. And don't forget, we're skipping the last two cords. Okay, so to complete the center of this diamond shape, we're going to take the last four cords in the center and tie another square knot. Okay, now it's time to deal with those filler cords we had tossed to the side. So to carry on this diamond row here, we're going to take the filler cord, cross it over, and then tie some more double half hitches. So we're going to tie our double half hitches all the way straight down to the very center bottom. And again, we're going to use the same filler cord on the right hand side and repeat the same process of doing double half hitches all the way straight down. But once we get to the very end, we're going to tie the two filler cords together and one more double half hitch. Okay, so tie the two filler cords together. That will complete the diamond shape. And next, we're going to grab our last filler cords here and we're going to repeat the same process. And I just want to make a note here, when you tie your first double half hitch, try to get it as close to the original row as possible. But be aware, there's probably going to be a little bit of a gap here. We'll fix that later.
Alrighty, tie your two filler cords together to complete the diamond. And oh yes, we are doing this two more times. So I went ahead and finished all three sides here. Next, we're going to be attaching them together using the cords that our reverse lark's head knots were sitting on. So grab two cords from one side and two cords from another. And we are going to be tying two square knots. The reason why we're tying two square knots here is to bridge the gap. It also helps lower our cords down so that it meets the other cords. You'll see exactly why when you get there in a minute, but for now we're going to be tying two square knots. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and tie two on each joining side. At this point, I recommend you grabbing your pot and making sure that it fits inside. If it's too snug, then you can always adjust your joining square knots a little bit further down. That's actually what's really excellent about this pattern is that you can adjust the size of pot just by changing the distance of your square knots. So mine fit perfectly, but if you want to make it larger, all you would have to do is space out your square knots here a little bit so that there's a bit of a gap. So carrying on with the pattern, we're gonna do more alternating square knots. So grab two cords from your left and then two cords from the previous square knot above. So essentially all we're doing here is filling in this gap with alternating square knots and that helps join our sides together. So grab two cords from the previous square knots above and two cords from your right and tie another square knot. And as I was saying earlier, if you space out these square knots here, that'll actually increase the size of your plant hanger. Okay, so it's the same thing for the next row here. Grab two cords from your left and two cords from the previous square knots above and tie another square knot. I just want to add here, make sure that your row of square knots are even. They're all in line with each other. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate this last knot here in real time for you. And then the rest of them, I'm just going to motor on through. So grab two cords on the left hand side from the previous top square knots. And then grab two more cords from the right hand side and complete one more final square knot. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to zip on through and I'm gonna complete the last two rows. You wanna do all the way straight down right until you get to the base of the bottom of your diamond shape here. And there you have it. This is what it should look like at this point. And you guessed it, we have to repeat the same process to the other two sides. Ta-da! <laughs> that trick never gets old. Okay, so this is what it should look like now. So with your last 40 inch strand of cord, we're gonna tie another gathering knot right at the base. Okay, so make your loop and gather up all the strings at the bottom here and place it right on top. Take care to make sure that it's centered and then start wrapping your gathering knot. Once you've made it up to the top, pull your cord through your loop and then pull the bottom cord. And here's a major tip for you. Tie a knot at the bottom of your gathering knot cord. That way it doesn't get mixed in with all your other tail end cords. Yeah, that is a huge game changing tip. I can't tell you how many times I had to go searching for that cord. Anyways, trim all your tail ends neatly and there you have it. If you like this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. 
Also, if you make this pattern, feel free to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. Or come find me on my free Facebook group, link in the description. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe. Also, here are two more videos I think you'll enjoy. I'll see you over there.